Hello everyone! How's it going? Vasco here from the Angular University. Welcome back! In this course we are going to be using the Yarn Package Manager. We won't be installing a lot of dependencies other than Angular, but still the use of Yarn will be very useful. That's because we have the guarantee that whatever installation I did on my machine, that's the exact same tree of dependencies that is going to be installed in your machine. So this is great for course stability and to make sure that you don't run into issues due to differences between the libraries that we have both installed. Now to learn a little bit more about Yarn, let's switch over to its website, yarnpackage.com. So what is Yarn? Yarn is a fast, reliable and secure dependency management package manager. So this is built by Facebook and if we go over the documentation we have here the key points. So this is basically a better NPM. Why is it better? Well, you might have noticed when you use NPM sometimes, so if you have been using it for the last few months, the last year, you will notice that sometimes you do an NPM install the npm install fails, then you do a second npm install and all of a sudden it works. This is because there are some race conditions in the npm installation that are one of the causes for this. You might have uh, struggled with the dependencies that change, so for example, you have a dependency that gets deployed on the npm repository, you pick that up via semantic versioning, so in your package.json you define a range of versions, you get a version that breaks something and all of a sudden you don't have reproducible deterministic builds. So Yarn provides a solution for all those problems, you get reproducible builds that are faster and you get the ability to freeze node dependencies. More importantly, you get the ability to freeze your whole dependency tree in a deterministic way. NPM also have a similar mechanism called shrink wrap, but it wouldn't give uh, reproducible results. For example, if you would uh, shrink wrap your dependencies, then call npm install, then call shrink wrap again, you would get different results. Also, the Yarn Package Manager is designed from the beginning to support offline mode, which is important in certain environments such as enterprise build systems, where we are not guaranteed to have a consistent connection to the internet. Let's try Yarn right now to install our repository. So if you open here the folder of our main repository, you will see here a yarn.lock file. We shouldn't edit this file directly, but we can open it and we can see that it's simply a plain text file. So inside here we have the information about the complete dependency tree of our application. So this file determines in a unique way what are the exact dependencies that we need to build our application. It's our log file. It responds to a given snapshot of the dependency tree in time. So I'm running it here on my computer. If you download this repository and you simply type yarn in the same directory where you have your yarn log file, you will see that the yarn package manager is now populating your node modules. So it's downloading the dependencies of our project that are defined here in our package.json but we have the strong guarantee given by the package manager that the dependencies that you are installing on your machine are the exact same dependencies that were installed also on my machine at the moment that this yarn.log file was initially generated. So how does yarn work? Let's say that you were installing the package.json dependencies in a project that does not have yarn yet set up. Well, the behavior of Yarn would be identical to do an npm install. Yarn would inspect the package.json, determine a tree of dependencies and download it. So the only difference there is that the download would be faster and that if you do multiple installations on your machine, there is a more efficient cache that is set up by Yarn in your local machine. Now, the first time that you install Yarn, Yarn is going to download dependencies and create the log file, specifying exactly what were the dependencies that you downloaded at that moment in time when you first called Yarn on a project. We are going to see that in the next lesson from an empty folder. But right now we can see here that 
you have already a yarn.lock created. So when you installed here yarn, you got exactly the same dependencies as I got here on my computer. So I know that if my application works on my computer, it is also going to work in your computer. The yarn.lock file should be checked in into source control and it should not be edited manually. We are going to talk a little bit more about Yarn in this course and we're going to use it whenever it's practical, specifically to scaffold our application. Right now we are already taking advantage of many of its benefits. You are getting a working build that will not break with the publication of new NPM packages because of Yarn. So right now you should have here a success message saying that the build completed successfully. So with this the installation of the lessons code is now completed. What you have here is the full repository of the course, but we have installed it just to make sure that everything is set up correctly. So node, npm, yarn, the angular CLI, everything is set up and ready to go as well as your IDE, so that you take the most out of this course. Right now in the next few lessons, we are going to start from scratch from an empty folder. The first section will focus on the why of reactive programming. Why do we need reactive programming? What problem does it solve? And how does that relate to the observable pattern? It's coming right up in the next lesson.